Marshall, you present what you call the Great Waves Prophecy. Could you tell us what this prophecy is and where it comes from? The Great Waves Prophecy has been gifted to us from the source of all life to prepare us for the future that is coming and to warn us of the changes that we might have to encounter along the way. As a gift of warning, it is also a gift of love given to an unprepared humanity. For we stand now at the threshold of great change in the world, great environmental change, great social, political, and economic change. Many people can feel this and of course see it taking place all around us. And yet it is so important now that we gain a sense of what is coming over the horizon. Because part of life isn't just living for the moment, it's actually preparing for the future. And that is why we have intelligence to enable us to do this. And we need this intelligence now more than ever. What I will be sharing with you today are not my thoughts or my inventions, but literally come from the great revelation that has been given to the world today from the creator of all life, to prepare us for a future that will be unlike the past, and to give us the gift that will empower us to know what to do and how to proceed as we navigate the changing and difficult times ahead. What specifically does the prophecy say about the future? The prophecy paints a picture of the future both in terms of short-term and long-term realities. Clearly the world is warming up now. Clearly we're facing a world whose atmosphere has been radically changed and continues to be changed. We're facing a world where ever-growing numbers of people are, are drinking from a slowly shrinking well of resources that are available. And yet as this accelerates, we begin to hit thresholds major thresholds that we're already facing in many parts of the world, particularly in poorer countries. But even in the wealthy nations, we're facing thresholds now, great storms that are coming to the world, which are not merely exceptional events, but are signs within themselves of a changing world, signs that the seas are rising and that superstorms are coming to batter the coastlines of this nation, and nations around the world in many places. The new message tells us, for example, that over a period of 150 years, the seas will rise over 100 feet. Now, even if the seas rise only a foot or two, it'll be a major catastrophe for ports and cities and communities on the coastlines. It tells us that certain parts of the world will become uninhabitable due to lack of water and the inability to grow food, and that millions of people will become refugees seeking refuge somewhere else. Somehow, they must find shelter, and indeed, who will accept them? Who will take them? We're seeing this already in the world today on a smaller scale. But the larger scale presents a problem that's almost overwhelming in its scope and will require tremendous humanitarian aid and service to the world and tremendous cooperation between nations to meet these kinds of challenges. The new message tells us that food production will decline significantly given these great weather events, storms, floods, droughts, of a nature rarely seen in the history of our world, all happening now in an accelerating manner. The new message tells us that the cities and ports of the world will be flooded within 30 years flooded to a point where some of them may become uninhabitable, where whole populations may have to move inland from areas that cannot be restored. And yet while this is tremendously shocking, and it has been shocking to me to receive these revelations, because these are not my ideas, I'm not coming up with this, it's taught me how I need to understand the changing events in the world to recognize the signs of the world, not merely to interpret them to fortify my own sense of ideas or beliefs or assumptions, not simply to reassure myself that everything's going to be okay and that we'll recover from anything that can happen, but that is not true. Rather, the signs of the world teach us to watch the world, become world people now, not people that are just consumed with their own interests, not just consumed with their own desires, 
or fulfillment or own problems, but begin to look at our communities and the surrounding environment to see what needs to be done to protect the human family going forward, giving these great waves of change that are now striking upon the world. Where we're now in the foothills of the great waves of change. The things that I speak of are already happening in an accelerating manner. And people around the world are being severely affected by them, even leading nations to war and conflict, even leading to great migrations of people who cannot live in their countries any longer, who cannot be sustained there. This is a crisis on so many levels, and it's a moral crisis. For if we consider ourselves to be spiritual people or ethical people or moral people, this will challenge the degree of our faith the depth of our faith. Can we be prepared to take large numbers of people who are stranded and need a place to go? Think of our children who will be facing even more powerful demonstrations of the great waves of change that are striking upon the world, affecting every aspect of our life. It is something that takes courage and determination. You actually have to overcome resistance within yourself your own fear, your own sense of hopelessness or helplessness. Because the new message from God that is showing us these things is giving it to us to give us the eyes to see, the ears to hear, and the will to prepare. It is so easy to capitulate and to think that it's the end of the world. But if it was the end of the world, we would not have a new message from God teaching us how to restore our world and to prepare for great change. It's a calling for each of us to become strong and determined and compassionate with one another. We're all in the same boat now. One nation will not become successful if other nations begin to fall and to fail. There's nowhere to hide from these great ways of change. All the places that people go, those places will be subject to great events as well. It is really a calling for humanity to emerge out of adolescence, living purely self-serving lives, to begin to see and question how we're going to take care of our world and each other and ourselves and our families, given these great ways of change that are striking the world. It is a threshold that we are already in now. It's not something that's going to happen 50 years from now. There's no way to be complacent about this if you're being responsible, if you're being careful where you live, how you live. So important now. Because many places that are greatly inhabited will become uninhabitable in the future. And in the meantime, will become ever more dangerous places to live, subject to great climate events, subject to great economic events, subject to changing circumstances. The new message tells us, however, that all people that have come into the world and have come into the world and are coming into the world at this time, our people are being sent here to deal with this. If we go beyond our own very human desires and concerns and hopes for fulfillment and stability and happiness, there's a deeper well within us a deeper reality, a deeper knowledge that is still connected to those who sent us here. So what I'm telling you today isn't merely sensational. It's not meant to be sensational. It's not merely to scare you or frighten you into action. It's also to reach that part of you, that deeper part of you that exists beyond social manipulation, social uh, imprinting, that deeper part of us that holds for us our greater purpose for being in the world that will be called forth out of these great events. For I tell you, it takes great events to bring greatness out of us. Where do people cooperate most thoroughly, most compassionately, but in times of great duress, times of great need? We will cross economic boundaries, political boundaries, social boundaries to do this. And our world is now entering an ongoing emergency facing the great waves of change. This will produce great calling for people, but also great danger. We should never be taken lightly 
or assumed to be of little consequence, for it will affect the lives of every person in the world today and all those yet to come. So, Marshall, what specifically does the prophecy say about the timeline of these events? The prophecy tells us that we're entering a new world reality. We're actually entering a new world experience. An experience is unlike what even our parents had to go through, which was significant in and of itself. <clears throat> Into this new world reality, uh, we're facing many things that have never been faced by the whole world before. A changing atmosphere, a changing climate of the world, changing ha habitability of different regions of the world, shrinking resources, the potential for huge Con human conflict over who will have access to these remaining resources. That's a very big issue, a very big concern. But it's also the world that we have been sent to serve. And the new message tells us that we will be in this transition into a new world reality over the next 150 years. And we're in it already. It's not something that's going to begin years or decades from now. We are in it now. This is happening now. The ground beneath our feet is moving now. Perhaps you can feel it and see it and sense it. It's palpable. It's observable if we care to look. Many people regarding major events get concerned about the time frame of major events. What I would like to emphasize here is the importance of preparation. You prepare long before a major event. You prepare because you recognize that such an event is not only possible, but probable. And probable not only based on history, but based on the changing circumstances of the world. For instance, a warming world creates warming seas, a warming atmosphere. That becomes fuel for superstorms, storms on a level that rarely ever occurs and has occurred in history. Now it becomes more frequent. Now it becomes more destructive as more people are inhabiting vulnerable areas of the world. You know, it wasn't raining when Noah built the ark. We have to build our ark, not only for ourselves, but to take care of those people we care about and our communities. You begin to build your ark way before the waters rise to overtake you, way before circumstances overtake you, way before the industry that you work for goes overseas or disappears. We have to be people now who are watching the world very objectively with as little personal preference and as little fear as possible. This is how you gain the eyes to see. The new message calls this being in the watchtower of your life. For every fort in older times had a watchtower, and every fort today has a watchtower, though it may be different, maybe technological. But you need to have a watchtower in your life and to have the strength and courage to be able to look at things without coming to immediate conclusions. One of the problems that people have in these is they want to make everything understandable today. They want to be comfortable with it. They want it to be reassuring. But living close to the edge and reality of life is not so reassuring. You have to learn how to reassure yourself, to gain faith, in your spiritual heritage to re reassure you, to gain faith in the power of this deeper knowledge I speak of to reassure you, to gain faith in your ability and the ability of those who are close to you to reassure you. Here you cannot simply be a victim of life, but an active participant. For all center ultimately to serve this world, both for the times in which we live and for the times to come. Timing, however, is important. Given the changing conditions of the world, the time we waste is time lost. The time that is too concentrated on insignificant things, personal interests, hobbies, becomes time lost. The earth beneath us is changing under our feet. It's not that we need to panic, because panic is not effective. But we begin to look and sense and decide what we can do, beginning on a small scale and taking on bigger things as we go. But it has to be concentrated, it has to be determined. And not everyone can do this, truthfully. And you can't demand people 
everyone to do this. You can't demand that because that's, that's not fair. That's not right. There are certain people who are already feeling uncomfortable with the condition of the world, the condition of their nation, for example, the condition of their economy, the condition of the health of their nation, the health of their people, the health of themselves. These are people who can be reached by a great message like this. They're already stirring inside. They're already looking for what they need to do. Because you simply can't be worried all the time. You need to get into action. This is what replaces fear and worry, which merely makes you weaker over time and less able to respond. So I pray that the things I'll be saying to you today will incite courage and determination. Because God is not going to save us and intervene in the 11th hour to change everything that we've done. God has put a deeper knowledge within us to guide us. And from there, God can work through us to change things that need to be done without the overbearing emphasis on theology, religion, or belief. It is our moral fundamental foundation. That's why we're here.